broadcast is live. Let's go. Hi, Ms. Sheila. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm <laughs> fantastic. My name is Dan Roshan. Today, I am joined with Sheila Quadros, who's the biggest troublemaker that I know of. She's going to blame our tardiness on me. Oh, my goodness gracious. So, um, excuse me. Uh, we have people on another uh, stream that are looking for us. So, I don't know if you can hear me right now, but here's where we are. I know you'll find us soon enough. So, Sheila, welcome. Sorry for the, the challenges there. No worries. All right. So, Sheila, you are a leader of a team in a very large brokerage mm -hmm. with a couple hundred agents. And you've been in real estate sales for a very long time. You've owned a brokerage. Uh -huh. You have done many different things to really help others in their success. And I want to talk to you today about, you know, what you have observed in regards to, you know, burnout and stress mm -hmm. from real estate agents, you know, what causes the stress, what causes the burnout. Before we dive into that, why don't you share with us a little bit more about who you are? And then that way the viewers and the listeners can learn who Sheila is. Absolutely. So first and foremost, I am the wife of an absolutely amazing husband named Eric, who is our productivity coach here in the Market Center. I am the mom of two amazing little boys. Uh, well, I say little, they're 12 and 13 now. So Xander and Maverick. And I am blessed to lead a group of agents um, that have high hopes and high dreams and are motivated on a daily basis to come to work. And so every day that I get up, I say, God, what do you have in store for me today? And whose life can I change? And that's truly, truly my mission is making sure that I've touched somebody in a way that's going to make a very big difference in their life. So that's a little bit about me. Cool. Now you mentioned something when you were talking there. I want to make sure that the listeners or viewers can understand. What is a market center? So a market center is a real estate office. Okay. Like a brokerage, right? Absolutely. All right. Fantastic. And you're located in? Falls Church, Virginia. All right. I'm one of, I'm one of Sheila's agents. So she, Yay! she read, Yay! All right. You're in Falls Church, Virginia. So if mm -hmm. uh, you're a real estate agent in Northern Virginia, you should know Sheila. All Absolutely. right. So I know you've had a lot of different roles as, as a coach, as a mentor, as mm -hmm. a... So what have you seen, Sheila, that has caused stress with agents? So I think it's a couple things. When people get into this business, some of the reasons that I hear that they're getting into the business is for flexibility and to be their own boss. Um, and I actually think that those are the two things that actually defeat them the most. Um, being their own, own boss sometimes is a lot more difficult than they think it is. And there isn't a tremendous amount of flexibility in real estate other than you might be able to go have lunch with a child during the day or have a dentist appointment. Um, but as far as your workload, um, you know, clients want to see houses on it, the nighttime and, and the weekends. And so flexibility kind of can go out the window. And I think that those are the two things that defeat agents the most is that idea in their mind that, you know, they're going to be their own boss, tell themselves what to do um, and come and go as they please. And okay. I have found that that is not the case in real estate for those that are successful. Okay. So flexibility and freedom and be your own boss. Mm -hmm. Probably also money. I'm sure that you, you heard that a lot for, for agents yep. getting into the business. They, mm -hmm. they believe that it's a, um, it's easy money. Would you yep. consider the a real estate agents easy money? No, absolutely not. <laughs> and it infuriates me every time somebody says like on a blog post or on a Facebook post, hey, real estate agents, I don't know why they make so much money. They don't do anything. I'm like, oh, my goodness, gosh. Yeah. Uh, all the things a real estate agent does do, uh, definitely they, they get paid um, a small amount of money in comparison to the stress and some of the things that happen behind the scenes that they're probably not letting their clients in on because they don't want to worry them for whatever reason. So tell me, um, so tell me a little bit more about that freedom and flexibility piece there, where one of the things, I don't know if you agree with me on this or not, is, is that real estate in, in pretty much any profession does offer the opportunity for freedom and flexibility, yet it's not in the manner that most would think of what is freedom and flexibility. It's about managing the time and the way that you spend your time. So you can have a fantastic life. I know you have two great boys that you guys do a lot of soccer. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know that's the biggest priority to you. Like that okay. is your biggest priority, right? And you make Absolutely. sure that you have time for them and, and your husband, Eric. And at the same time, you run a very, very large organization. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So tell me a little bit about like, like, okay, so it, there's a lack of freedom, yet there's also an opportunity to be able to focus on your highest priorities. Tell me a little bit about that. How do you make that work? Uh, very intentionally. Yeah. Um, you have to be purposeful in this business. And I can tell you that there are certain things that I think every real estate agent should do um, and that many don't do. And so if you want to know what my uh, my my success story is for a real estate agent is show up sure. and I mean nine to five, uh, get to the office early. Like you would a job that you're being paid for because you're, you're in essence going to pay yourself. So you need to show up. You need to have your day calendared and you know, your time blocks are really specific. And when you allocate a time in your time block, use it for what you allocated it for. So if you're time blocking lead generation for two hours every morning, make sure that's what you're doing. Um, If you do those things, I think you'll take out a lot of the stress and burnout that happens. And the other thing is set expectations. Um, Telling your clients that you're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week is going to kill you and put you in a very early grave. doctors, lawyers, they don't tell people that they're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They have schedules that they adhere to. And I think that real estate agents should do the same thing. Um, and you should be making appointments for your your day and adhere to that. And when you have a hard stop at whatever time it is, six o'clock, you know, seven o'clock, that's your stop. Got it. So that's follow a schedule, time. show up, Put in the work mm-hmm. and set expectations of others as well as I'm assuming yourself. Yes. 100%. Family, clients, mm-hmm. right? right? And, and and treat it like a job where you you say, I'm gonna clock in at nine, yep. I'm gonna clock out at five, six, or seven. Mm-hmm. And whatever that is, I'm gonna actually clock out because mm-hmm. it's it's as detrimental to somebody to 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 really not control how much they're working as it is to not work enough or yeah may not be, it's a different, it's a different impact. Would you uh-huh. agree with that? I agree a hundred percent. And at the same time, I'm also going to tell you that um, most real estate agents, although they might know that sometimes don't do that. <laughs> right? okay. And so when we talk about burnout, burnout happens in really seasoned agents as well, yeah. because somewhere life gets out of balance and okay. somewhere, whatever they were considering to be the priority of the moment overtook what actually is their priority. And I'm going to tell you, in, in, in my case, it's a God family business thing, right? That's just okay. how it goes. And my family will always be my priority. Um, sometimes, and my husband will attest to this, sometimes you forget that. And what happens on the other side of that is that work-life balance becomes work, 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 little life. And if you want to have a really big life, you have to set the priorities in motion. Yeah, I heard you say balance there. And what I've observed is it's really counterbalance. So it's mm-hmm. it's like I'm 100% with my family and zero with my business. Or I'm 100% going to be at the gym and zero with my family. That doesn't mean that the gym's more important to me than my family or the business or whatever. It just means that I'm 100% or as close to 100% as I can be doing whatever it is that I'm doing. And I'm intentional. I heard you say intentional Mm -hmm. about the actions that I'm taking. Would you agree with that? I would agree. Actually, Dan, 150%. I think think if you could master intentionality in the moment that you're in, then you have mastered this whole game called life. Oh, wow. So it's not just about... So it's not, not about real estate sales, it's about living the very best Absolutely. version of yourself in, in life, yeah. in the moment. Got it. Awesome. 100%. So yeah, I agree with you 100%. Okay. So so those are some of the, the things, that, and, and we, we touched on some of the strategies that we can employ as well, uh, by you know such as managing our schedule, setting expectations, et cetera. Besides letting your schedule rule you or not setting expectations for others, what else is it that you see that really sort of crushes real estate agents or get in the way, whether that be a new agent, a mega agent or a seasoned agent? What, what, are, your, what are your thoughts on that? Hmm. So it's their ego. Ooh. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's right. that nobody can do it better than I can do it. 
mentality oh, that they control. have. Control, yeah. yeah. Um, and I have to do everything because my clients want me. You already know, 87% of all real estate agents fail in this business. And you also know it doesn't have to be that way. If you're a real estate agent and you're looking for consistent and predictable income, I invite for you to get your free copy of Real Estate Evolution, the 10 step guide to CPI, consistent and predictable income for real estate agents. And you can do so when you visit www.therealestateevolution.com. I'll share with you your book that I authored to show you the way. And it's free. You just have to pay for the shipping. Thanks. And I really beg to differ with that. I really believe that if you have people that can help you in different areas through leverage, um, whether that be a system, a person, a tool, uh, you could actually become better yourself and as an all around package and give better service to your clients. Because somebody that's working 12 to 14 hours a day, you know, six, seven, eight, somebody said to me, I'm working eight and nine days a week. I was like, wow, I don't know if we have eight or nine days. I get the concept because that's sometimes how we feel, right? Yeah. How often are they going two or three weeks without taking a day for themselves? But that comes back to ego. Put your pride aside and understand that you have to ask for help. And you have to find really talented people in which to bring into your world to make your world a better place. Nobody succeeds alone. Remember that year? No one succeeds alone. Yeah. So in other words, the, the, the real estate agents that keep control of their lives also understand and respect that the clients don't necessarily care for me as an individual. They care for me about the, the standards that I represent. Amen. And when I can surround myself as an agent or when you can surround yourself as an agent with the people that uh, upheld those standards, then you're able to even provide a better care for your client. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And you get a little bit of your life back. Well, yeah. And there's that too. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> and now you get to and live a life by design, like that, right? <laughs> that, that work life yeah. uh, aspect, you know, where it's not all real estate or, you can move back into the family time. Okay. Do you see a difference between like, so I really sort of categorize, I don't know if you agree with this or not, uh, sort of like three levels of agents where you have uh, sort of new agents and then seasoned agents and then mega agents. And I, mm -hmm. I will relate to that to a new agent. Really the, the biggest priority that they have is to figure out how to lead generate. Mm -hmm. The seasoned yeah. agent will either be at a plateau or if they intend to continue to grow, they would focus on, organization building. And then the mega agent would be either at a plateau or if they could want to continue to grow, they would focus on leadership. Yes. Okay. So, so when I'm looking at, you know, so you think that there's the, what are the different challenges between those three segments of agents? So in your new agent, um, you have the basics, right? Yeah. They, they all want to run before they learn to walk. Right. And so they have to learn the foundational skills. Um, so that they can be productive and that it that to me is finding agents that are productive to watch what they're doing shadow say hey can i go on a listing appointment with you can i go to an open house with you i'll be quiet i won't say a word um showing up to all the the events as far as training goes um pouring into their minds as much as they can to get really good at what they do then your seasoned agent is is that a little bit of that ego piece right there, right? The seasoned agent is hitting that ceiling because they haven't found a person, a system or a tool to take them to the next level. And that's usually what's missing. And I would say probably a person before anything else. A lot of times they're not systematized, right? They're, they're a fly by the seat of their pants, kind of, oh, the phone is ringing. I got to put a fire out. Um, they don't time block. Uh, and you see they could do really well and they're never going to get past a certain production level, period. It's, just a, it's a physical impossibility. There's only so many hours in a day. Right. Because you only have, I mean, you have assets of relationship, of, of money, of, of health. Time is an asset that is a scarce resource. Very. You can't recreate time. You can recreate money, right? right. 
you can have money, lose it, and get it back. Oh, sure. But you can never get the time back. Yeah. You have it. If you lose it, it doesn't come back. Got it. Got it. Okay. So ego for the season agent. Yeah. What about mega agent? What are their stresses? So their stresses is how do I build a world big enough that I can keep people in it? Mm. Right. And how do I perfect the systems and the culture inside my world that people don't want to leave? Got it. Got it. Uh, one thing that I, I, I stepped past there was when you were talking about the season agents and about hiring the, uh, you know, it, it's going to start with people first and then systems. Yep. Um, so what I understand that to mean is that as a, as an agent, typically <laughs> we're not very good at creating systems, right? You got that right. <laughs> right. So the skill set that it takes to be able to, be, to be able to be a, a, a great agent to, to be able to guide people through a process, to be in rapport, ask adept questions, actively listen, are not necessarily the same skill set as it is to document procedures, uh, pay attention to the you know the one, two, three, A, B, C. Right. So what I heard you say is it starts with people, and then the systems then come next. Correct. Right. Yeah. So if you're a seasoned agent and you're looking to get to the next level. Um, hiring somebody that is probably the direct opposite of you <laughs> is the way to go. Um, yeah. I tell people all the time, if you sit down and you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you absolutely love them and you can see them being your best friend and you want to go out to dinner with them and be chummy, they're not the right person. Yeah. Right? Because they are just like you. And real estate agents are relational beings. Um, the people who support them, and I will, I will venture to say are actually the reason you're highly successful is the back end, right? right the yeah. person standing behind you doing all that work behind the scenes is not the relational person you are. So right. it should be a direct opposite. And um, yeah. That and when you say direct opposite, I hear that to mean the direct opposite in regards to behavior, yes. yet aligned in regards to ethics, cultural, oh, 100%. Morals, morals, values, mm -hmm. yes, beliefs perspective exactly right so mm -hmm. it's, it's it's the it's like if sheila if, if i was uh helping sheila to be able you know to support her to support you then i would you know because she, sheila is such a great instructor such a great mentor and and is able to listen i'm gonna tell you that's one of your skill sheila has a notebook <laughs> that she has i know she's sitting on it right now okay are you sitting on it i have a ton of them uh -huh. okay all right. She has a notebook and okay, there's one of them, right? Because I knew it would be there. And I haven't actually physically I physically have seen you I've one time looked, in the last five months, right? Look at all my notebooks. There's okay. a ton of them. Everywhere you go. And the reason why I'm pointing that out is because those my observation of you is those are your listening tools. Hmm? Because when you're meeting with somebody, I know that you you've, you know, I've met with you, I meet with you regularly, and when you're talking to me. You are being very intentional to listen and to write. Mm -hmm. And and I don't know, maybe you can help me. Is it, it could be like sort of a crutch to say, well, if I'm writing, I can't be talking, right? It, it could be, maybe it's a subconscious type thing, right? Um, either way, it, it works really, really well. And then also I'm sure that it helps you to remember, Absolutely. right? So, so going back to that, if I was supporting you as somebody that's a really, really incredible listener, really great wisdom, I would have to be different in regards to the behavior to be able to best support you. Mm -hmm. But we'd have to, we'd have to align on our values and our, and our, you know, our culture, how we treat each other, how we treat others and all that type of stuff. A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so a little, a little trick for anybody that's looking to hire an administrative assistant. If an administrative assistant does not walk in to the interview with pen and paper to take notes, don't hire them. Oh, <laughs> that's a great, that's a great little, uh, that's just a little tip. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, all right. I want to, I want to make sure that Mr. Uh, that coach, uh, coach Eric, uh, you know, you got some great comments there, uh, about, um, you know, about, uh, ages needing a great coach. And I agree with you. I literally just got off the phone with my coach an hour ago between, uh, between this interview and, and my lunch. And we all need a great coach, no matter where you are in your business. That's, I've, I've believed in that. I've had one to three coaches for 13 plus years. And I, I believe in coaches for different areas of your life as well, not just business. Um, and then Eric also says that not only like what we're talking about right now is unique to real estate sales, but it's not. 
Like no. we're talking, we're talking about this in the context of real estate sales. Yet, as Eric so nicely, uh, accurately points out, this is true of all business owners. Mm -hmm. You know, That's when they're looking at that, that you know, lead gen you're in the business of of lead generation, specializing in whatever your business is. In mm -hmm. our case, we're in the business of lead generation, specializing in real estate sales. I recently wrote the book Real Estate Evolution: The Ten Step Guide to CPI, consistent predictable income for real estate agents. I wrote this book because I have sold real estate since 2007 and developed an immense amount of experience and knowledge. During my journey, I've witnessed hundreds and maybe even thousands of real estate agents fail in this business. And I firmly believe that that's a shame. In Real Estate Evolution, I will show you the exact steps that I have used as a real estate salesperson to sell one to 15 homes every single month for the past 129 consecutive months. It took me more than two decades to learn the sales and persuasion techniques and more than one decade to master the real estate sales techniques to be able to produce the content that makes up this book. And it took me more than a year to write at a pace of three hours every single day. If you're a real estate agent and you're looking for consistent and predictable income in your business, I invite you to get the book, Real Estate Evolution. And you can get that by visiting www therealestateevolution.com and I'll even give it to you for free as long as you pay for the postage. And then it's building an organization and then it's 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 uh, leadership as I mentioned before. And so um, so what do you think Sheila what do you see as the the number one thing that gets in the way of a real estate agent's success? And I'm going to ask this in a slightly different context. So I want to I want to uh, put a spin on this. Success in their relationships, success in their health, success in 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 the areas outside of real estate sales, okay, what do you see that's inside of real estate sales that sometimes make people, and I'm not being judgmental, but maybe drink too much or eat too much or not exercise enough, that type of thing. What are your thoughts on that? So I think it goes back to time blocking, right? Uh -huh. Because if you want to have all those things in your life, you have to find time for them to be there. And I think that if you can get purposeful about um, putting them where they belong in the priority in which they belong, then you'll be able to succeed at a much higher level. Um, and remember that unless the house is on fire, something probably doesn't need to be moved to fit that fire in. Um, you can take care of that fire at another time. Got it. Right? Got it. In this high demand world of instant gratification, everybody wants what they want when they want it at that moment. And I think that if you adhere to those behaviors, then you're just going to be doing things at the will of other people. And when right. you're saying no to something you need to get done and you're saying yes to somebody else, who are you hurting by, by denying your activity? So it's the misperception that a, a business owner or a or a real estate agent may have in regards to if this is calling me, then I should be paying attention to that. And I'm going to be giving a, a greater care. That's a misperception. Then if I'm I start a task and I'm six out of 10 done with it, well, let me get to 10. Again, it goes back to that. I'm 100 percent focused on this. Right. And then let me transition over to the next in in almost 100% time, I wouldn't say 100% of the time, you're going to be able to complete that first task before going on to the next. Would you Would you agree right. with that? Yeah. Absolutely. Right, you know, cool. like I hear agents say all the time, well, my lead generation is in the morning. And then I say, well, I didn't see you. Oh, well, I had a home inspection. Oh, right. so then your lead generation time isn't in the morning. Because if it was, you would have said, I'm sorry, I can't have the home inspection with you at that time. I have another appointment. Yeah. Can we make it for one o'clock in the afternoon? Right? Yeah. The priority has to always remain the priority. Yeah. And so and in the rare case that you do have to replace and you or erase, then you should replace. Absolutely. Right. And I had that happen to me two weeks ago. I had a client come up from South Carolina, would be in town for eight hours. And I knew he was meeting three agents. And so I said, you know what? It makes sense for me to move my lead generation. So I'd be the first guy in there because I know he's eager to hire somebody. And I'm going to be the first and the last that he's going to meet today. And, um, you know, so that was a strategic decision to move, um, you know, lead generation. I guess technically you could call that lead generation because I was in being intentional to get a, a listing. Um, but 
rarely will I take an appointment during uh, during lead generation time. But, but the one thing I know about you <laughs> is that if you move it, oh yeah, some other time during that same day, yeah, you're going to make up for what you didn't do during your scheduled time. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And that's where real estate agents make the mistake. Yeah, is they remove it from the schedule and don't put it back in in the same day to be intentional. Um, the ebb and flow of real estate. That's you know. I have business, I'm doing really well. And then all of a sudden, I don't right. have any business is a consistency issue. They're not consistently doing lead generation on a daily basis every day because they get busy and they say, oh, I can't do it. Yeah. But if you don't do it, you won't have business. And that typically so, goes in about 90 day cycles. You can you can look at. Right. Uh, yeah, you can just look at the charts of real estate agents. It's like January, nothing February, nothing March. April, I forgot what fall day, uh, March, uh, but every yeah. three months, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's true though. Really, yeah. it is, and and that goes back to behavior. Yeah. Are you consistently doing activities? Because the act, don't focus on the results. Focus on the activity. If you do the activity, the results show up all the time. Eric says that working with awesome people and using um, tools that help you be accountable is really important. So, how how important is it? in regards to the people that you surround yourself with. So they, call that are, a so they call that a softball, by the way. <laughs> you are the average of the five people you, you hang around the most. I, I remember Dave Ramsey being up on a stage once and he said, when I want to be, when I wanted to be a billionaire, I went and found five billionaires to hang around all the time. And now I'm a billionaire. Wow. And so if you want to be highly productive, you need to surround yourself with highly productive people. If you don't, then you're never going to be highly productive. I would imagine that Dave, before he envisioned himself as a billionaire, envisioned himself as a millionaire mm -hmm. and probably surrounded himself with millionaires at okay. that time of his life and then envisioned himself as a 500,000, 500 millionaire, whatever, mm -hmm. however you call that. Right. And, and sort of walks into it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, again, you, you see real estate agents out of the gate, skyrocket and they knock it out of the park and they're my, you know, rookies of the year. And I can tell you every one of them glued themselves to people who were highly productive, had conversations, asked questions, you know, called people, traveled to another state to go see somebody, did the things that they needed to do to get where those people were. And a couple of years down the line, that's where they end up. It's interesting you say that, Sheila. There's somebody, I'm sure she's still watching this right now. She was commenting earlier, who's in our office, that when you just said that, remind, like you just described somebody that's in our office named Delara Wentz. And uh, she's been a, a licensed agent for two years. And I remember almost two years ago when I joined your office, we went on a convention and there was Delara right there. That was almost two years ago. That was well before she had the success. She was taking the action. Absolutely. Yeah. And so Delara made more than six figures, substantially more than six figures just last month alone. What? <laughs> and I, it's a, and it's not about the money, it's about the value that that she provides to others. Yeah. And then and then and it's about the money because what can that money now help do for her and her family? Oh, absolutely, 100%. Right. And the money, it's just like what you said, because when people listen to things like that, sometimes they get confused because when you go back to you focus on the activity and the results come, it's not focusing on the money. It's focusing. Yeah, and as I know she, she does, it's focusing on what is the activity that I can provide the most amount of value, that I can solve the most amount of problems, that I can uh, uh, help other people achieve the most amount of goals. And when I focus on that, the byproduct will be money, it will be relationship, it will be health, mm -hmm. you know, you know, depending on the scenario, right? But it's about focusing on the activities and then having everything follow it. Absolutely. So I don't know that I've ever gotten into business with somebody that was focused on money or that their goal was money. Um, yeah. That's just for me, that's just not the person that I want to surround myself with. Now, when somebody focuses on money, because that money is going to provide something in their life for their family, or for other people outside of their family as you know donations or whatever those are the people i want to be in business with because then the the money goal is an important goal because it's going to provide for other people yeah i see that there's a difference between 
focusing on money versus focusing on profit and focusing on money management. Ooh, right? you're talking my my language here. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm the right? queen, queen. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So, tell, so, so we're talking your language. So tell tell me what tell us what what translate that for others in in, in Sheila's words. So in my words, it's this: is I'm not worried about how much money you make. I'm worried about how much money you keep. Ah, there it is. Right. And so my focus is always on how can I make sure that your bottom line is providing for you and your family and you're not overspending through expenses and you're being really purposeful about money management. Yeah. And there's one last thing that I want to I, I, I share with you in regards to that. It's about a fiduciary care to your clients. Absolutely. Because when you're not, you go back to lead generation, lead generation provides you as an agent the opportunity to provide a fiduciary care for your clients and fiduciary management you put in them in front of their interests in front of others, including uh, all others, including your own. That lead generation piece allows for you to have consistent business. When you have consistent business and when you have profitability, when you manage your money, then you could put 100% of your effort when it's that time to focusing on their needs and helping them. Absolutely. And so it all it all ties together. Right. And when you're careful about your money, right, and you're you're holding your money accountable, then you're providing value to your client that's not just being like thrown away, right? You're providing the best value because you're ensuring that the value matches the money you pay for it. Yeah. Right? Awesome. So that that means that you're giving really great service because you're making sure that you're holding that money accountable and that service accountable. Love it. All right, Sheila, as we wrap up here, what are, what's the last minute thought that you'd like to leave us before I ask you how we can get in touch with you? So if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. And I believe that all things come through vision first. And I think that you have to believe you can do it and you have to see it happen visually in your mind and then it will produce itself always. So see it first. You have to see it first. Believe in it. You have to believe it. And then you have to come let me help you make it happen. I <laughs> love it. Love it. And then let Sheila make, you ha make it happen. Yeah. All right, Sheila, if I'm a real estate agent, I'm in Northern Virginia, Maryland or Washington, D.C., or the suburbs of D.C., and I'm looking to have a larger life. I'm looking to do real estate the right way. I'm looking to scale my business potentially. How do I get in touch with you? You can email me at Sheila Quadros, and the name is written right under my picture there at kw.com, or you can call me at 703-585-7879. And for those of you that are listening, Quadros is C-U-A-D-R-O-S, and we'll put that in the show notes as well. Thank you very much, Sheila. I really appreciate your time today. Absolutely, Dan. You have a fantastic day. Ah, you too. Give us a thumbs up by clicking the like button below. Don't forget to subscribe to...